This video was sponsored by Leather Honey. Hey, what's up? In this video, I'm gonna answer a question that you guys ask all the time, probably my most common question, and that's where do I go to buy wood? Not just wood, but wood specifically for furniture. And a lot of you guys have been coming here, and let me tell you right now, stay away. Just don't do that. This is not where you wanna buy wood. But don't worry, I'm gonna show you where you should be buying wood. I'm also gonna take you in here and show you a few reasons why you don't wanna buy your wood here. So, let's go inside, let's check it out, see what they have to offer, and then I'm gonna take you someplace that's much, much better. Oh yeah, there's also a link in the video description for our Patreon. If you want to support the channel in that way, just click down there, you get extra perks, check it out. Now, one thing I learned from many years in big business, who am I kidding, I've never had a real job, anyways, is that you want to be careful when messing around with these giant companies, because they got goon squads and they'll come after you. So you want to keep a real low profile when you're doing surveillance on this level. So we're going to go in here, but we're going to try and keep it cool so no one notices what's going on. Hiding is key, and you also want to make sure you're staying camouflaged, so I dressed appropriately. Where am I? Right here. Didn't even see me. Now first let me say, there's nothing wrong with these big box stores. They're great, and they provide a very valuable service, but not really for furniture makers. Sure, they have a ton of wood. I mean, look at all this wood. It's everywhere, but it's specifically made for one purpose, and that's construction. So it's not really graded for making furniture. This plywood, for example, it's got this nice big bow in it. I would never build a cabinet with this stuff. Not to mention, it's ridiculously overpriced. $72 for a half inch sheet of plywood? Come on. Now they do also sell hardwood. See, hardwood boards right here but their selection is pretty small. They've got some maple, but holy cow, that can't really be the price. Jeez Louise. And then they've got some poplar, which technically is a hardwood, but it's pretty soft paint grade wood. Oh my gosh, what the heck is this? Red oak? What is this, 1962? Come on. The name of the game in these big box stores is just get as much out the door as you possibly can, which means that quality definitely suffers. And if you look in the lumber racks, you're gonna find some questionable things. Like this plywood. I don't think it's supposed to be corkscrewed like this. I mean, maybe if you turn the camera, uh, no, it looks okay, I guess. But it, look, construction grade, construction grade, construction grade, construction grade, construction grade, construction grade, construction grade. Eh, wanna be construction grade, construction grade, construction grade, construction grade, construction grade, old man, construction grade, construction grade, siding, construction grade siding, and hide. So after taking a long peruse around the store, I decided that we could probably find something better elsewhere. So I took off my camouflage, left it right here on this stack of plywood, and I ran for my life. Literally. I sprinted out of there like there was no tomorrow. I'll be back when I want some Ryobi lawnmower or something. But for now, we're on to greener pastures, and hopefully much, much better wood. But first, we need to make a phone call. Hello, I was calling, um, I'm at home right now looking at plywood, Okay. and I'm just trying to figure out if the plywood at Home Depot is cheaper, I just want the best price. Do you have cheaper plywood than Home Depot? Uh, it depends on what you're looking at. Is it better quality? Well, it should be, yeah. And then at Home Depot, all I can find right now is red oak and maple. Do you have more hardwoods than that? Yeah, I mean, I have hickory, red oak, maple, birch, um... Oh. Okay. How yeah. far are you away from the Albany home? So, do you know where the 34, Highway 34 exit is? Is yep. that Dick Kerbala? Yeah. Okay, so, are you familiar with Woodcastle? Oh, yeah. Right there on the side of Highway 34. 
Yeah, if you turned in, like, you're going to Woodcastle, we're right there on the right. Oh, okay, and you got a pretty wide selection of hardwoods. Oh, yeah. All right, and I could just come look around? So I no, don't know no, any. No, I don't know right. any of the lingo. If I come in there, would you be able to just kind of walk me through and help me figure yeah. stuff out? What kind, of, what kind of equipment do you have? Oh, I got one of them um, skillular saws. Okay, you don't have a table saw. No, um, and I got one of them um, the up and down uh, the jigsaws. Okay, so our lumber has been surfaced. The 13 sixteenths, so it's a sixteenth over three quarters, and has one straight edge. Okay. So you would need a way to straighten out that other edge. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, I'm just gonna come in if that's okay, and I'll just talk to you in person. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. All right. What was your name? Lee. Lee. All right. I'll see you in a few, Lee. Thank you. You bet. All bye. right. Bye. Now, weren't they friendly and helpful? Let's go to the Hardwood Center. And let's actually buy some real wood. Hi, I called on the phone earlier about some oak and maple. Uh, was that you? Yeah. No way. Did you get that from Home Depot? Yeah. Hey. We're at my local Hardwood Center. In fact, it's called The Hardwood Center. Real original name, I know. But this place is awesome. And as you can see, different than Home Depot, there is a crazy amount of wood to choose from here. And this is only one aisle. They also have this whole aisle here. Plywood pretty much everywhere. And a whole smattering of slabs of various shapes and sizes. So. Wherever you live, before you go to Home Depot, get online, do a Google search, find a local hardwood supplier, and you're probably going to find something like this. Not only is it going to be better quality wood, but they're going to be way more helpful at figuring out what kind of wood you need to do the project you want. Now I'm going to walk you through some of the things you should look for when you walk into a place like this and start picking out your wood. Picking out your lumber. All right, so let's say you walk into your local hardwood supplier and you want to start picking out some wood. Whenever I'm looking at pieces of wood, there are five main things that I'm looking for before I pick a piece of wood out and take it home with me. I'm going to walk you through each one of those five things, starting with the twist. No, not that kind of twist. <laughs> I'm just being silly. The twist in the board. Here, come here, I'll show you. All right, the twist. It's one of the first things I look for in a board because it's one of the hardest things to get rid of if a board has it. And that's where the board is just not on a level plane. It means that halfway down or partway down the board, it starts to twist. So the way that you can see this before you pick out a piece of wood is you just pull the board off the rack and you look straight down it. If you can see a nice flat level plane all the way down, you're probably good. But if you see the board start to corkscrew a little bit, this is something you want to watch out for. The reason is if you're buying thinner stock like 13 sixteenths or three quarter, you don't have a lot of material that you can send it through a joiner and get rid of that twist. If you're using thicker stock like five quarter or six quarter, depending on what you're trying to mill it down to, you might be able to get rid of that. But the best thing to do is just to set that piece aside and try and find one that doesn't have a twist. The next thing you want to look for is the bow. Now with the board off the rack like this, you're just going to rotate it. Boom, just like that, a quarter turn, and you're gonna look down it on this axis. And what you're looking for here is a bow, meaning a nice big curve in that board. You wanna avoid that because also it's hard to get rid of that on the joiner. So if you look down the board and you see a nice straight line, one eye open, you're probably pretty good. If it looks like a recurved bow that you could shoot arrows through at some unsuspecting deer, I'd probably put it back in the rack. The next thing I look for with any board is cracks or splits. It's horrible to pick a piece of wood out, you take it back to your shop, you start working with it, and it's got a split down the middle and it just falls apart. So this board, it looks nice and strong. I don't see any splits, no movement when I push on it. Check the front and the back. This board, however, it's got this big split. I wouldn't want to use that. Um, I don't know if I should have done that. My point is, 
check for splits and cracks before you buy your wood because you don't want to use that when you're building furniture. Hello people, this video is sponsored by Leather Honey. Since 1968, people who care about leather have been trusting Leather Honey to protect their precious leather goods. You see, unlike other leather products on the market that just sit on the surface of the leather, Leather Honey is specially formulated to soak deep into the fibers, to hydrate, to moisturize, which means that one application can last up to six months long. I have this beautiful leather apron from Calvera Tools that needs a little pick-me-up, so I decided to use this leather honey and give it a good rub down. You can tell as soon as you start putting the leather honey on, it starts to bring back the vibrance of the original beauty of that leather, make it shine, make it pop, and it's super easy to apply. You can see all the ways that Leather Honey's cleaner and conditioner can help prolong the life of your leather by clicking the link below. Just use coupon code BOURBON20 to save 20% off Leather Honey's complete leather care kit. Next thing I look for is knots. Because you can have a board like this. It looks beautiful, it looks nice, it looks like something you'd want to make a dining room table out of. But if you look at it a little closer, it's not. So good. <laughs> See what I did there? Just make sure you check your boards for knots and voids. And sometimes it will look perfectly good on one side and you won't see the knots until you flip it around to the other side and realize, holy cow, we might have a little issue. And then the final thing that I look for just right off the bat to make sure it's a piece of wood I want to use is discoloration. Now this piece has a little discoloration on the front and by discoloration I mean just a difference in color of the wood. Now walnut's one of the biggest offenders because walnut has something called sapwood. Well, all woods have sapwood, but walnut sapwood you can really see. So this is the dark more heartwood and then as you get towards the outside of the tree it starts to turn this yellow color. That's the sapwood. Now, I might be able to just trim the sapwood off and get rid of it, but depending on the piece, sometimes you see both sides of the piece. So make sure when you're looking at the color of your wood, you don't just look at one side, but you also look at the other side. Because as you can see, the entire back of this piece is sapwood. So if I was doing something like a cabinet and I wanted it dark on both sides, and I didn't check this before I checked out, well, I'm gonna have two different colors and it's not gonna look as good. So check for discolorations on both sides of your wood before you buy. Now one of the biggest differences between a hardwood supplier and a big box store like <laughs> home <laughs> is moisture content in their lumber. You see, places like that, they're geared towards construction. And for construction grade lumber, you're looking at a moisture content of like 19% or lower. But when it comes to building furniture, if you try and build a piece of furniture and glue up a bunch of stuff with a moisture content of 19%, well, as that wood dries out and shrinks, everything's gonna pull apart and your piece is gonna look terrible. So you wanna come someplace that is selling wood for the purpose of building furniture because the moisture content in that wood is gonna be much, much lower. And the moisture content you're looking for is 9% or lower. I typically like my wood to be at a moisture content of around six to 8%. Now there's a couple ways that you can determine if the wood is at the correct moisture content. Well, you could ask the owner of the wood supplying place that you're getting your wood from what moisture content they like to keep the wood at. But the best thing to do is just bring a moisture meter with you. Nobody's gonna be offended if you're walking around with a moisture meter. It's a smart thing to do. Just test the moisture of the pieces before you buy and make sure that it's somewhere between six and 9%. If it's upwards of 19%, then get out of home and go to a hardwood store because you just don't want that much water in your furniture. Unless you're making a water bed but then the water is on top of the furniture. It's not in it. That's a different thing. Okay, cut. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about when you're picking out wood is how the measurements work. Because if you've only been shopping at the big box store, like then you come to a hardwood supplier and the measurements are a little bit different. Like I said, places like Home Depot use construction grade material and the way construction grade lumber is measured is like a one by or a two by or a three by or a four by which is funny because a two by four isn't really two inches by four inches it's an inch and a half by three and a half inches it's confusing well 
regular rough sawn hardwood is just as confusing because instead of saying things like one inch or two inch, they say things like one quarter or four quarter or eight quarter or 12 quarter. Why do they do this? I don't know. I think people just like to screw with us and make things more difficult. All you really need to know is you just got to add up the quarters. So four quarters equals one inch, eight quarters equals two inch, and so on and so forth. Now it's rough sawn lumber, which means you're still probably going to have to do some mill work to get it perfect. So keep that in mind when you're buying the lumber, because if you have a project that has to be two inches thick, you don't want to buy eight quarter because it's not exactly eight quarter. They just have to be within a sixteenth of an inch, give or take. So it could be a sixteenth below two inches or a sixteenth above two inches. And the reason they aren't precise is because they're expecting you're going to take this wood home and mill it down to the final dimension yourself, which is why once you go below one quarter, it's not in quarters anymore. They go to 15 sixteenths and 13 sixteenths. And you might be saying 13 sixteenths, why not just sell three quarter? Well, like I said, they're expecting that you're going to have to mill it to prepare the wood a little bit, and they're trying to give you a little extra to do that. So just keep that in mind. If you need an inch and a half piece of material, you're not going to want six quarter. You're probably going to want eight quarter so that after you mill it and join it and everything, you can bring it down to an inch and a half, which is kind of a pain, but it's just the way things are done. So deal with it. Now, the other thing that's going to be different when you come to a hardwood supplier versus the big box store is how they measure and sell the wood. In the big box store, it's all going to be per piece or linear foot, which means that you're paying for each foot that you're buying. If you come to a hardwood supplier, most likely they're going to be selling by the board foot, which means the total cubic feet of what you're buying. Now, there's a complicated way to figure out the board feet, and I know a lot of you in the comments are gonna say, it's not that complicated, it's just this plus this minus this times this, whatever. But as you know from my past videos, I hate math. So there's a very easy way to, for you to figure out the board feet by yourself, and that's just download the board foot easy app. I'll put a link in the video description. And it's just a little app, and you pull it up, and you put the length, and you put the width, and you put the thickness, and you put how much it costs. It'll tell you the total board feet, and it'll tell you how much you're gonna pay for it. And then you can measure the stuff before you take it into the cash register and compare with them. Because I've seen people measure up wood, and you get in there, and I'm like, I got 30 board feet. And they're like, you got 35. And I'm like, prove it. And then we go back out and we measure it, and what do you know? It's 40 board feet. We were both wrong, and I ended up paying more. My point is you should just check yourself before you get in there so you have an idea of how much it should be so you don't get ripped off. All right, let's talk about plywood for a second because buying plywood can be very confusing because there's all different types of plywood and thicknesses of plywood and grades of plywood. So what do you buy? When do you buy it? When do you use it? And all that jazz. Well, I can't go through everything because as I said, there's a lot, but I can give you a simple breakdown of the grades of plywood so you kind of know what you're looking for on the various products, projects, prod, the things you're building. Remember when you were in grade school and your teacher would give you a grade depending on how well you did? A, B, C, D. Isn't it weird how there's no E? It just jumps to F? Anyways, I'm getting off topic. Plywood is graded the exact same way. A being the best and D being the worst. But it also gets a little more complicated to that because the A or the letter refers to the face side of the plywood or the side that you're going to use. So you could have a piece of plywood that is graded AA, meaning it's an A on both sides. That's pretty much the best plywood you could ever get. But typically the back of the plywood is graded with a number, not a letter. So you could have an A side and then the back would be a one. Now one is the best for a back, but then you could have a two or a three, three being the worst. See how this is confusing? So you could have an A side with a three back, meaning it's really nice on the front, but it's not so nice on the back. Or you could have a piece of D plywood, meaning it's really horrible on the back and have it be a one on, or no, really horrible on the front and then a one on the, basically, if you're looking for good plywood, you want an A side. If you want it to be nice on both sides, A1 is pretty darn close to AA. But if you're looking for absolute perfection, you want an AA sheet of plywood. But depending on what you're doing, paint grade, you might be able to go down to a B1 or a B2. Anyways, that's a basic breakdown of how plywood is graded. So don't go buying some D3 plywood and try and make nice cabinets out of it. 
because you're not really going to be that happy. And if you go into Home Depot, you're not going to find any AA plywood. You're going to find some <laughs> plywood. The other thing to think about when you're buying plywood is the cut of the veneer on the top. There are three main cuts, well, really four main cuts that you could get for veneered plywood. The first one would be flat sawn veneer. That's basically where they flat saw just a big long piece off of the tree. So it's continuous grain all the way across the face of the plywood. Then you have plain sawn. Now that's gonna look like a bunch of boards because they basically cut veneer in strips and they glue it together. So when you look at the veneer of the plywood, it's gonna look like a bunch of boards smushed together. Then you can get rift sawn plywood. That's where the, the wood veneer is actually cut on the quarter axis, but it's 15 degrees off the quarter axis. So you get these long straight lines or you could get quarter sawn, which is cut quarter to the axis and you get these flex and strips. Bottom line is pick out a piece of plywood you like the look of, but just know that for things like rift sawn and quarter sawn, it's a cool look, but it is gonna cost more money. Well, hopefully that was helpful to some extent. I wanna give a huge shout out, thank you to the Hardwood Center for letting us go in there and be complete goofballs and film in their space. I also wanted to mention a few things I didn't mention when I was there. Another question I get asked all the time is how do I know how much wood to buy? And that's a tricky one because obviously you don't wanna to buy too much wood and get stuck with a bunch of stuff you're not gonna use. So what I typically do is I figure out how much wood I need to complete a project and then I add 10% to ensure I have a little extra. Another good thing to do when you find your local hardwood center is to go in there and ask what the return policy is. The nice thing about the hardwood center here in Oregon is that they let me return full boards that I haven't cut up yet, which means that I can overbuy and whatever I don't use, I just take back in and get a refund, which means that I can just buy as much as I want, build my project and whatever's left over, just give it back. Another thing you want to do when you're looking around and finding pieces is let's say you find a piece that's beautiful and it's more than enough wood that you need, but it's got a crack or a split or a knot at the end of it. Well, just go ask the people at the front desk if they can cut that piece off because they're probably not going to sell that board with a knot in there and then you can just buy what's left over and not have to pay for those voids or knots or cracks. All these things are just good practice to do when you're going in there buying wood. Like I said, I hope this video helps. Comment down below if you have any more questions and we'll try and get them answered. There's also links in the video description and um, you can go support us on Patreon if you want more behind the scenes and direct access to me for questions and answers and coupon codes and live weekly YouTube and stuff like that. Um, I think that's it. All right, until next time, bye. The Hardwood Center. Parkour!